I never felt accepted growing up. I was always constantly in trouble. And at that point, I just didn't care anymore. I wanted to not feel that. I didn't care if I was accepted. Um, and I just was trying to run away from that. Um, my childhood, I was born in Southgate, which is kind of like a ghetto of Los Angeles. We moved up to Windsor when I was four. Uh, my parents were both Christians, had been together for many years, met in high school, uh, grew up going to church. Uh, I am the oldest of four. Uh, had a really great upbringing, had a lot of stuff that we did. We constantly went on trips, um, went to camps, all those types of things. It was a great home to grow up in. I didn't have any traumatic experiences that led me down this path. I just wanted to get away from feeling anything, um, feeling pain, feeling happiness. I just wasn't comfortable in myself. So I started using uh, smoking pot in high school because it was socially acceptable and that led to other things. Pot was my main thing, but I would, you know, use meth occasionally ecstasy, um, cocaine, take pain pills, um, you know, just kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything. It just helped me escape everything. It just made me numb to feeling anything, happiness, sadness, anger, uh, just kind of numbed me out from the world and let me be lazy and lethargic and not have to be a functioning citizen of society. Why did you want that? I mean, that's my question to you. I'm like someone who's on the outside looking at your life going, okay, what, why did you want to be numb and numb from what? I never felt accepted growing up. I was always constantly in trouble and at that point, I just didn't care anymore. I wanted to not feel that. I didn't care if I was accepted. Um, and I just was trying to run away from that. My rock bottom was I was living in the Days Inn and um, we got kicked out uh, for, for using, I was living there with my son, Mikey, and my husband. And we got kicked out because of our using at that time we were, I, I was using pot, meth, taking pills. Um, and during our stay there, it was a very, um, not abusive relationship. I mean, but just, it was, it was turmoil. We were constantly fighting, um, and you know, one would, would go out for over, you know, a couple days and then I would go out for a couple days and we were using meth and I um, took some methadone and smoked some meth and I woke up in the hospital with a catheter in with a breathing tube down my throat. Um, I guess I had stopped breathing. And once I was released from the hospital, I went back to the hotel and at that time we got kicked out and we moved to another hotel and the police came to the door on a warrant for my husband and I had just smoked pot in the room and I was arrested and charged with unlawful cruelty to a child. So being arrested and being in jail was my rock bottom. Just being away from my son, I knew I needed to get my shit together. And when I was released, I was determined to change my life, become a functioning citizen of society and become a better mother, 
a better wife, just a better person in general. And I started going to Crossing the Jordan to Bible studies. Um, I originally just started going just to get myself around sober people because part of my release, I had to, you know, uh, do random drug tests for a few months and go to classes and do community service. And I just wanted, I wanted that change for myself, but I was also, I had to have that change for myself. Um, but I went to Crossy the Jordan, uh, starting to go into Bible studies um, and just get myself around sober people so that I could start living that life. I never <laughs> thought of myself as having a disease while I was in my addiction. I don't really know what else to say. I just, I don't feel like it's a disease at all whatsoever. I think it's an excuse for a lot of people and people are labeled get labeled that and they just kind of run with it and I feel like it's an excuse for them to continue to use. I know what it's like now to have real true friendships um, and I know that I'll be friends with these people and family with these people for my life. Um, we're in each other's weddings, we go to each other's baby showers, we're in the delivery room. Fallon was in my delivery room when Johnny was born. Um, it's just an amazing community that we have that's so encouraging and uplifting and hold you accountable when most people are, are scared to hold you accountable on those uncomfortable things. It's an amazing thing to be a part of. I run payroll, I make sure all the bills are paid and all the rents are paid and uh, I deal with any sort of emergencies that are happening, you know, in terms of leaks or car breaking down or things like that. I I uh, make sure that the funds are available for those things to get taken care of. Um, and I just do try to do whatever is needed of me th to the best of my ability. I don't really have a set job, but on my door it says financial coordinator. So I guess I could be called that. <laughs> my name is Cassandra Deck and this is my full disclosure.